Hi, everyone. I just want to say that I'm really appreciative of the chance to participate in this meeting. Sorry, I can't be there in person. If you can see behind me here, I'm in Dallas and snow's coming down pretty good right now. Uh, the QR code on the left side is a link to the handout. And if you just want to type that into any browser, it's buford.info forward slash EWI 2024. So I'm going to spend the next six minutes or so talking about bone marrow aspirate concentrate, uh, kind of where we're at currently in sports medicine and maybe a few uh, pearls on some future directions. These are my disclosures. They're available on the Academy website. These next two slides I've left in the handout, but I'm not going to go over them in the talk just because of time constraints. But there's some pearls on these two slides that you can review um, on your own time. These are the top five sports medicine surgeries as recently listed by MACGPT. So I'm going to focus on ACL reconstruction, meniscal repair, and rotator cuff repair. What about allografts? Well, in this 2022 study, we looked at allograft, bone tendon, and bone primary reconstructions. And the authors, uh, based out of Rush, used posterior iliac crest. They injected two and a half milliliters of bone marrow aspirate concentrate into the graft. What they found is that the bone marrow aspirate concentrate uh, group had better MRI findings at three months, which was exciting. And so what's the significance of these early findings? Well, what if we have something we can do in the OR that leads to earlier return to duty, earlier return to work, or earlier return to play? It's all about uh, you know, minimizing dysfunction and pain, and this may be a way to do it for the cost of a $35 aspiration needle. Let's talk about bone marrow aspirate concentrate and autograft ACL. And so in this study where the lead author was Dr. Ants, it was published this past year, uh, there were multiple lead surgeons. And so the graft choices were not um, uh, uniform. There was bone tendon, bone, and hamstring used. The surgeons used amnion and bone marrow aspirate concentrate. And uh, the reported results were really not that encouraging because they did not show a change in MRI outcomes and no significant patient reported outcome measures uh, were, were noted. And so in diving deeper into this study, which didn't really show a promising outcome, we see that the cellular content was very, very low. The bone tendon bone treated patients had a CFU count of 422 and the hamstring patients were 107. So that raises the question, well, what should the CFU be? You have to remember that you can't necessarily compare CFUs across papers because there's a human component. And so it's not a straight uh, number that spits out of a machine. That being said, to get into the ballpark, um, papers that show a good quality bone marrow aspirate concentrate have CFUs in the 2500s to 3500s. Uh, we had one paper where our average CFU was 4,700. So we may be talking about a drug here that's eight times stronger, if you will, in terms of cellular content versus what was used in this study. And that may account for the lack of significant change in this particular study. But what about bone marrow aspirate concentrate with isolated meniscal repair? Well, this level four study was published in 2021. They got the bone marrow from the femur, and we've discussed that, femur versus iliac crest. Uh, they used ACDA in a single spin system. Uh, it is important to note that six of these patients, it wasn't just a pure meniscal repair. They also had ACL reconstructions. Uh, we did have three-year follow-up. And so the reported results are that 100% had improved Lystrom scores at one year. And what was also encouraging was that 88% met pass criteria for meniscal repair at one year. So there's some obvious shortcomings in the study, but it was encouraging as a pilot study. And I think we need to, to look at bone marrow aspirate concentrate uh, in further detail when using it for meniscal repair. Rotator cuff repair. All of us are still chasing Dr. Philippe Hernigau's reported um, results in 2014. This was a level three study. He got bone marrow aspirate from the iliac crest. Note the amount. He got 150 cc's and he made 12 cc's of bone marrow aspirate concentrate. The genius of Dr. Hernigau's study was he injected two thirds of that 12, eight cc's into the footprint where the stem cells live. And he injected one third, four cc's into the tendon. He quantified the total injected. So we have the, the dose of the cells. It was 51,000 MSCs. And his results were astounding, 100% healed at six months. Even more astounding than that was a decade later, 87% of those patients treated with bone marrow aspirate concentrate still had intact rotator cuffs versus only 44% that didn't get bone marrow aspirate concentrate. Note the volume and, and note the location of the injection though. He also was one of the first to identify a dose-dependent outcome. Those patients that did not do well in his study 
had only about 1500 cc or 1500 cells per cc versus the average of 4300 mscs per cc and so just another example where the cellular content seems to matter for clinical outcome so what about the future of bone marrow aspirate concentrate in sports medicine i'll leave you with two final thoughts number one on cell dosing we will have uh, additional clinical proof showing tendon regeneration and cartilage regeneration even without a scaffold with cell doses that are only achievable with culturing, basically 400 times the current doses of our same day procedures. So a very, very different biologic and likely a very, very different biological outcome when we 400 X the dose. Closing thought number two, cell sourcing. There are companies in the United States currently working on allograft sources that are standardized, that are proven clinically effective for specific orthopedic conditions, and we should all hope that they get FDA approval. This will give us an off-the-shelf cellular therapy for specific indications. And I think that will really get us moving more in the direction of true regenerative medicine. I hope you have a great rest of the meeting. And again, sorry I couldn't be there, but thank you very much for the invitation to participate.